you, do you guys know who uh, Richard Brooks was? No. Richard Brooks, the way the actor Richard Brooks. No, Richard Brooks, the director. He made Logan oh, Richard from Brooks, Mr. Yeah, Goodbye. Okay, yes, he, yes, yes, yes. He made The Professionals. He he made I don't know a dozen great movies. He he, he made In Cold Blood. Uh, he was one of the great directors. Oh, God, Richard Brooks directing Cold Blood. I don't know why I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. And and many others. And he was a good friend of mine. He passed away. I don't know. 10, 15 years ago, but he and I were very good friends, and I went with him once to a uh, a film school where he was speaking, and a kid asked him, uh, what does it take to become a film director, Mr. Brooks? And he gave the best answer I've ever heard. He said, you've got to learn how to eat shit. And <laughs> he was absolutely he was absolutely on the money because what he meant was, you are going to find so many people along the way in the studio system that would that want to quote help the director unquote right. that want to give right. you notes that want to uh, tell you who to put in the picture that want to tell you what to take out of the picture and even a guy like Brooks and all of his contemporaries as as important as they were to Hollywood they had to go through all that shit as did right. I and all the guys from my generation. There's so many people, and I know you find it, Joe, that want to tell you how to make a movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's infuriating. And I think even if, even when you even when you give them, you know, the thing that they want or the thing that they purport to want, that doesn't mean that the, that the marketing and that the way and their release date and all the things that come post that are ever going to, you know, are going to work in your favor. There's so much of it that's out of your control. But when that part of the process is, is screwed around with and it's this constant second guessing and constant you know it's like listen I'll give it to the guys at Warner Brothers they know enough to get out of like a guy like Nolan's way just let him do his thing and I, it doesn't feel like that, that, that those movies are micromanaged and so you get something that for the superhero genre is at least interesting or like at least it's trying to do something different but you know for the most part you do you get these meddlesome kind of personalities and they need to justify why they pick up a paycheck every week and uh, and they become and you know listen they become uh, these kind of cogs but none of them have a real opinion and none of them I've never you know I've had a handful of guys I thought within the studio system that were really sharp and really opinionated and without fail they last about three months and then they're out of there you know um, because that does they don't encourage that kind of thought they don't encourage that um, this that spirit of like well let's let's pull for the right thing which is the which is the movie, you know, let's well, most, kind of rally most of behind the, this. Most of the films that are made within the system are made by committee. And and that's, right. I think, what, what Brooks was talking about. They're made right. by committee, and they, they have to push certain buttons. And that's something that, for the most part, independent film doesn't have to deal with. Right. Which I think, how did you find Billy making Killer Joe? Were you, was there any... Was it just you and your producer, and that was that was the uh, well, who you had to deal with, or did you have the process of the you know no, studio there was no, the fact? And, there was no studio. The the guy who financed the film had financed the Hurt Locker, and oh, I asked him, you know, he's a guy named Nicholas Chartier, and right. he made the Hurt Locker when nobody w would have was interested in making it. And I asked him, how come you made the Hurt Locker? Why did you make it when everybody else turned it down? And he said, I just wanted to work with her. I thought she was a good director. And, Mark, right. boy, you don't hear that. I mean, no, I know she is a great director. I think she's as good an action director as there is. And I agree with you. She, she had a tough time getting films made because right. most of her earlier films, you know, didn't register with audiences. I know that when my wife, you know, Sherry, when she was running Paramount, she tried to get uh, Catherine Bigelow onto a lot of films, and she couldn't do it. You know, wow. uh, the cast wouldn't work with her or, or whatever else. Right. Or, you know, and Sherry always believed in her, and, and as do I. And then she nailed it with the Hurt Locker, so now she, she's, you know, in, in, she's solid. But right. there was a time when she couldn't get hired. And she's as good as anybody around shooting action. Sure. Yeah, you're right. I, I agree with you, Bill. I think she's just as good 
as anybody. And even early films like Point Break and the Blue Steel thing she did with Jamie Lee Curtis. And I yeah. thought she did. And she did Near Dark ages ago. And I think she is. She's, she's extremely adept at that stuff. And that's and uh, it's, it's kind of shocking because of who knows. She's a woman. Who knows what the hell kind of idiotic reason people would have well, for not giving her those talent. types of movies. Absolutely. You know, she, and, and proved she, it, you know. She had the talent, but, you know, she hung in there, too. She believed in herself against all right. odds, you know. The odds right. of a woman getting any film to direct in Hollywood are, are, very, are great against, and especially an action film or something like The Hurt sure. I find, right. that, you know, and then what's really interesting, though, is that the whole industry recognized The Hurt Locker and, and voted for it for an Academy Award over Avatar. You know, right, right, um, and and she didn't have uh, the catering budget of Avatar, you know. So, but she hung in there because sure. she she was Personary, around, as yeah. you know, for years making good pictures. Um, right, absolutely. But this goes to what you're saying. But this goes to that idea again of you know ambition and drive, and 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 another part of that was obviously perseverance. You know, you need to uh, you need to you know not listen to you know, those around you that that, uh, that say you can't, you know, and, and keep telling yourself you can. And, and uh, you know, no matter how thick that wall gets, you got to keep blasting against it until it comes down. And that's, um, and you again, it really does. It just comes down to, in the simplified version, your confidence in your ability in yourself, you know, and yeah. what that means to you. Um, and, and that's uh, how you easy, measure it. It's easy to... Um you know, to uh, get frustrated. It's very easy to become frustrated. But if you love it, you know, you stay with it. 